Episode 9. Together we will have a look at the pooling of the different transformer layers when we aggregate the word embedding to a sentence embedding when we design our own sentence embedding with BERT transformers. And here we go. We start importing numbers, UMAP, our cluster algorithm, our widgets, our sentence transformers. I load again all the sentences from Deloitte's Tech Trend 2021. We have again a look at the sentence distribution, how many words are in a sentence. We find out that again, there are 40, there's one sentence with 45 words. That's the maximum amount of words in a sentence. And we immediately switch to our new models where we code or where we design ourselves a sentence transformer model. And here we go again, only this time we have the pooling layer. And I uh, especially, wait, I'll have here the API of the pooling for sentence embedding. And you see that now I have here uh, three different possibilities. I have the pooling of max token, of mean token, and mean square root of the length of the input token. And what I want to show you that you have to be careful if you do your pooling of the different hidden transformer layers within your model that you were downloaded from Hugging Face. In our case, it is the Roberta large model, 1.3 gigabyte, that you have to know what the maximum tokens, the pooling of only the max of all the tokens will perform to your system, will do to your system. So just let's run this and encode our sentences with this specific model. I already downloaded Roberta Large, so this took just seven seconds. And I suppose the encoding is gonna take four to five minutes. I will be back in a second. And after four minutes and 16 seconds, we have an embedding for each and every of our sentences in a 1024 dimensional topological space. Great. Next step is familiar, what you already know. We apply UMAP, this is a dimensionality reduction mechanism. We have a cosine metric and with about 14,000 epochs where the learning rate in my case is 0 0.5. I have a spread instead of 1.0 to 3.0 to show you the difference, to make it absolutely clear what a map maximum pooling layer will do to your data set. Then when we have this, we go to the cluster algorithm. We leave all the parameters identical and we end up with 11 clusters. Cluster number minus one is the cluster with the noise. 802 sentences are regarded by the cluster algorithm as noise and do not belong to any of the other operational clusters. Now for 3D visualization, we apply UMAP again. We merge in a data frame the sentences, the cluster levels, and the three-dimensional representation. As always, keep in mind, these X, Y, and Z are not physical dimensions. These are purely artificial dimensions of our system. And we are looking for the top bigram, trigrams, and the words within all the sentences of all our particular clusters. And I run through all of this because you are quite familiar with the code from my last videos. And here we end up with the three-dimensional representation if you have a maximum layer pooling of your hidden transformers. And here you see supply chain, zero trust, core modernization, decision making. Since BERT is content sensitive, you have another decision making, maybe in a, in a different context. Machine learning, low code, market expected network. Not such a good representation. I would not regard this as a acceptable a representation of the content of the document. But what's really important is now the distribution that we find here. These are all our 1,775 sentences. And we have a look now how the distribution depends, the cluster distribution depends on the size of the sentences. So 
Let's have a look at the first cluster. It seems to be the cluster with the shortest sentences. And since we only take the maximum value for all the embeddings in all the layers for each token, this is what we end up with. And you see that we have quite a linear distribution from the shortest sentences to the quite long sentences that even are too long to be displayed here. And we have short sentence, short, 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 becomes a little bit bigger the sentences, the more we move down. And here we enter another cluster. And also the sentence length in this cluster is quite identical. The length of the sentences are quite similar. Here we move further down, get longer and longer sentences. You know that the light gray dots, the sentences, are the noise that has not been assigned to any clusters. But since we have done the pooling to get a three-dimensional representation, it's not so much the cluster size, but the alignment or the positioning of all the dots within our topological space. And you see here, this is quite a medium distribution of sentence length. And here it becomes longer and longer and longer. So, of course, this is logical. This is what more or less what we expected. But you have to be careful. If you take the maximum uh, value approach to the pooling layer, this is what you would have if you have a content, a cluster, that is not dependent on the embedding or the content itself. But since you have the maximum, algorithm activated it of course the shortest sentences all the shortest sentences will be clustered together because you have no normalization regarding the length of the sentence the number of words in a sentence and there is an easy way how to optimize this result and i will show you in a second and now for another version of pooling Again, we start with our sentence embedding. We import NumPy, UMAP, cluster algorithm, our widget, our sentence transformer. We load our sentences from Deloitte's Tech Trend 2021, which we are now really familiar with. It is still the same distribution of sentences. We have a maximum of 45 words per sentence. And we go directly now to our new models that we design ourselves. And as you can see now, I changed a little bit our model already. And let me put the API of Sentence Transformer Models Pooling class here on the right side for you. You see that here within the pooling, we have three options more or less. We have a pooling mode with maximum tokens. We have the pooling mode with mean tokens, which is standard, and the pooling mode with mean squared length of the tokens, which performs the standard mean pooling, but is normalized, if you want, divided by the square root of the input length. So let's say you have a sentence with 16 words, square root is 4, or if you have just a sentence with 4 words, square root is 2, so you have a kind of a little bit of a normalization. And we will have a look, is this significant? What are the consequences? And to make it even stronger, stand out, uh, I decided to add a second pooling layer. I called it pooling model two. I used the same word embedding dimensions. I deactivated the max tokens, the mean token. And like in the first layer, now I activated the mean square root length token with the square root divided by the square root of the length of the input. And then again, I construct my model, I have my word embedding model, I have pooling one and pooling model two. And let's go for it. Yeah, and of course, my main hugging face BERT model is Roberta, and we operate now with the large model. It's about 1.3 gigabyte. And let's see. Our maximum sequence length should be 256. And here we encode the model. Batch size again 128. And I suppose this is going to take one or two minutes. I'll be back in a second. 
Now it was exactly 4 minutes and 20 seconds and as you can see I'm operating on my home PC with no NVIDIA graphics card so I have no CUDA cores to activate, I have no GPU acceleration, all is done on the CPU. I have 6 cores, 12 threads, the normal performance of my CPU with this task was about 55% of all 12 threads. So if you have, for example, a Threadripper, should be less than a minute, and especially if you have a GPU accelerations, I think it should be done in seconds. If you are unclear how many layers your model have, it is easy to find out. I just activate the model, and see, we see here, okay, our transformer is a Roberto model. We are operating with 1024 dimensions. And for the layers, let's scroll down, 10, 12. Wow, how many layers do we have with Roberto Lodge? I haven't say more than 20 layers. 24 layers. Okay, wow. Okay, then we have a linear puller, 1024 dimensional, then my specific pooling layer and another pooling layer that kind of normalizes the pooling a little bit. Quite some intense operation. And if you remember the word embedding also, um, there, the hidden layer is a multi, highly multi-dimensional structure. With bird base, you have 12 transformer layers, and the aggregation between all these different layers, you take the last four layers for a word embedding, or you just take the second to last layer and you concatenate, or you sum up the last four layers. Now here we are dealing not only with word embedding, but it's aggregated to a sentence embedding, so the complexity increases. We follow our given path, we start a UMAP. As a metric, I use the cosine metric. The local connectivity is set to 2, and the target metric for our calculation is L2. Now we run through the same algorithm again. We perform the clusterization. The amount of clusters, let's have a look. One, two, and three. Come on. Doesn't take so much time. Here we go. We have 11 clusters. Cluster number one has 433 sentences that are not assigned to any active cluster. We run through the three dimensional visualization again. Takes a little bit of time. Yes, I have a, <clears throat> a learning rate of 0 0.5 and a number of epochs from 14,000. Of course, you can reduce this amount if you want to have a faster performance. No problem at all. And we had end up with a data frame, as always, where we have for each and every sentence our cluster label and X, Y, and Z as our coordinate set for a three-dimensional representation. I just run through the bigrams and trigrams and let's have a look at the final visualization that we calculated. And the topological data distribution looks like this one. Maybe a little bit higher that we have the legend there. Okay. Technical depth, machine learning, decision making, work from home, remote work. Digital, digital, digital twin supply chain, supply chains, cost center, real time, zero trust approach, zero trust architecture, team, low code, improved performance, machine data revolution. It doesn't look too bad, but what's most important now, I would say, let's have a look at the length distribution of our sentences within each cluster. So. Let's have a look. Green is the cluster with the shortest sentences. Still one of the shortest sentences, the noise distribution here. Ah, you see here we have a green sentence that has quite a significant length. This sentence is nice, exactly what we wanted. Not only limited to short sentences, and again here the green right number of words within the sentence. If we look at the other clusters, yes, we have short sentences, we have longer sentences. That looks good. This is exactly what we wanted with the additional pooling layer. Here we have a short dark blue sentence, a long dark blue sentences. Let's have a look here at the 3D representation. 
That's a quite a huge cluster here. And as you see, the mixture of long and short sentences is exactly what we set out to do. So our double pooling layer was successful. And the topological graph that we ended up with, I would say if we regard this light gray sentences, the light green dots as noise, the clustering has been performed successfully. And in a way that not all the small sentences form a cluster, but there is more or less an acceptable distribution. But keep in mind, whatever you do, if you have a short sentence with only three words and you have another sentence with 40 words, of course, they will have a significantly different embedding. And you have to be careful that not all the short sentences end up in a cluster and you get a different content representation of your document. Thank you.